In the city of Norfolk, around 8,000 people live in public housing. And the city's housing authority says the structures of the communities concentrates poverty and crime unfairly on poor communities. Well, this year, it released a plan, they say, would change the communities of Tidewater Gardens, Calvert Square, and Young Terrace. The critics say it will displace and disrupt thousands of lives. Penny your sides, Matt Gregory looked into Norfolk's plans. Matt? Yeah, the city believes a new start will change lives for the better for thousands. The critics disagree, but this has been done before in Norfolk, and we wanted to see what life could look like if the city breaks ground on new public housing. In the shadow of the Norfolk skyline and down the street from Harbor Park, there's a section of streets you may never want to walk down. But to hundreds of people who live in Tidewater Gardens, this is home. Out here, you can't have a peace of mind, like, at all. For 10 years, Anthony Blagman has called this area home. She's seen the floods. It comes all the way up, mm -hmm. all the way up here. She's lived with the crime. Somebody got shot in front of my door and my kids was outside. As we walked around Tidewater Gardens, she explained to me she wants out. She wants something different for her kids. I want to change. I want better for me and my girls. I got three little girls. Now, this is just one story we found among the brick barrack style homes, houses that haven't been changed and rarely updated in the last 50 years. But Norfolk's Redevelopment and Housing Association wants to change that. We want to transform this whole area so that people living here can have a better affordable housing, a better quality of life. Barbara Hamley is the chair of the association. Earlier this summer, they released an ambitious plan, a new vision of the St. Paul's district. The plan is to, is to bring in mixed income housing um, and some retail, but this time we really want to make sure that our residents come first. Because they got to have somewhere to put the people. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to put all these people? The plan would demolish Young Terrace, Tidewater Gardens, and Calvert Square, nearly 1,700 homes in total. So in order to put the residents first, NRHA has held six informational meetings to explain their vision and hear what residents want. So residents want to make sure their input is in share. It is controversial, but Hamley says if you don't hear anything else from her, hear this. Um, because we've been accused, in RHA in particular, in the past of just moving people out. That is not our intention, and that is not what we want to have happen. And RHA has said they want to build something different, and the best example they could point to is up the street in what's now Broad Creek Village. The whole area with projects just like downtown North of Tower Park, Carrier Park, Young Park, Outside his two-story brick house, we met Harry Johnson. He now lives where Bowling Green used to stand. NRHA says they demolished more than 700 units in the early 2000s in the area, and then came Broad Creek. More than 400 assisted units and 100 more of mixed income housing, like the house Johnson invited us into. I was amazed what they done. This is his retirement home, after a long life, one that started in Tidewater Gardens. They might have changed maybe a little landscaping, maybe, you know, some doors some wonders, um, but technically it's the same. So what does a man who has lived in both think about NRHA's new plan? It's the same vision as what they had here, then I say it's a great thing, even though some people may say, well, you know, this is where I live. Well, that's where I live, but you know, sometimes change is good. Now, the proposed plan for St. Paul's District is just that. It's a plan. And I'm told if it did go through, the change would be slow and take possibly 10 years to complete. We have more information from NRHA on our website, wavy.com. You just click on this story. Matt Gregory, 10 on your side.